Muslims are really supposed to respect the Prophet Muhammad and respect him to the highest peak other than worshiping him as God. All right, let's talk about this cartoon controversy now and the larger issue of bridging cultural and religious differences in a pluralistic society. Our guests this morning are the very Reverend Samuel Lloyd. He is the Dean of the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. Dean Lloyd is on a working visit to South Florida. We are delighted he can join us. Altaf Ali is the Executive Director of CARE Florida, that is the Council on American-Islamic Relations, a nationwide organization that tries to advance relations between Muslims and other groups. And Jim Moran is the longtime editorial cartoonist for the Miami Herald. He has won a Pulitzer Prize for his work, which is provocative, edgy, almost every day, and likely to offend someone if you are successful. <laughs> good morning, good to see you all, glad you could come in. Um, Altaf Ali, let me ask you the most basic question that I suspect is on the minds of a lot of people who are watching. What is so offensive about a dozen rather feeble cartoons that would send hundreds of thousands of people into the streets rioting, showing this deep anger? Well, there are two, there are two things to this question. Number one, the cartoon depicts our prophet in a very volatile way. It depicts him as a terrorist mm -hmm. with a turban in his head, with a bomb in his head. This is contrary to what he has practiced, what he has preached, what he has taught humanity. And that itself has created a, um, a deep offense to Muslims worldwide. And of course, that's not to say the actions where Muslims were protesting in a very in a, in a violent way is acceptable. It's actually contrary to his teachings. Yeah. So basically, um, Muslims were deeply offended because it depicts a peaceful man, a humble man, in a very violent way. Uh, Jim Moran, you create uh, cartoons every day in the Miami uh, uh, Herald editorial pages, and a lot of what you do is meant to be provocative. I don't know that you ever set out to offend some people, but indeed you do. So what, what's your response to this controversy? Well, I mean, any time you draw a cartoon, I don't, I'm not provocative uh, for the sake of being provocative. I mean, any time you express a, an opinion, there's going to be an opposite opinion, and uh, that's just the nature uh, that's the nature of the the beast. Um, uh, I, you know, I I'm, I find it to start with. There, I think there are two cartoons out of the twelve, yeah. which would be considered editorial cartoons that were that would be offensive. Uh, the rest of them uh, range from illustration to uh, what we would call jokes or gag cartooning, really, and yeah. and. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I personally wouldn't have drawn them, uh, um, yeah. but... Uh, well, you, you know, wouldn't have drawn them, yeah, but, and in fact, Dean Lloyd, uh, we are not showing them as a conscious kind of editorial act because we know that they would offend some people, sure. and just as we don't want to offend uh, people who are Muslims who would be watching this or one of our newscasts, you know, we don't use other racial epithets in our newscasts because those would also offend. Yeah. Uh, are we being too PC? <laughs> Great question. I think what we're seeing here is a clash of civilizations, class of cultures and culture values, the enormous sense of reverence for the prophet in the Muslim tradition, and the, the profound reverence with which they hold everything about his person and leading to the reluctance to create an image at all. On the other hand, free press, free speech, the, 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 the great openness of Western culture and the invitation to be provocative and insightful and for people to, uh, to engage people. Right. We have these two...